I'd like to demonstrate the way you can make something invisible. Let's start off and try to make this teapot invisible. First thing I'm going to do is add, take a look at its dope sheet. In looking at the dope sheet, we see the teapot here is selected. However, if I were to go to add a visibility track on it, you would see that add is grayed out. So what I'm going to do is select the entire word for the name of the object teapot. And in this case, when I look at track, visibility track, you can see I can add it. Looking at the visibility track, I'm now going to add some keys. So I'll go over here to the insert key uh, button and add a key at frame 0 and at frame, uh, let's say, 10 and another one at 20. Right-clicking on the key, I can see the in-out transition in my Bezier controller. I'm going to start off with a value of 1, fully visible, at time 0, and go linearly out to the next key, which is key 2, at frame 11. I'm going to come linearly into that. Now what I'd like to do is ramp down to a value of 0, visibility. So I'm going to change the value here to 0 for key number 3 and ramp down linearly. So let's check that again. We'll go back to the first key. We'll come out linearly with a value of 1. So this is going to stay at full uh, visibility from key 1 to key 2 or frame 0 to frame 11 and then ramp all the way down to 0 by the time we're at key 21. So let's take a look and see how that actually works. So we'll minimize this and we'll now slide our slider and we see that nothing happens. Okay, So let's see what else can go wrong here. We're going to right click on the object and take a look at its properties. So step number two after setting the keys is to really change the render control instead of by layer. Let's do that by object. Let's see if that's made a difference. So now we're going to ramp. Now you notice here what we don't see any change in the in the visibility of the teapot as I go from frame 0 pass where I'm making it totally invisible at frame 21. So let's render first of all at frame uh, somewhere in the first full visibility area. So let's bring up our render screen here. And check that we're doing a single screen and we'll just render that. And you can see the teapot is totally visible in this rendering. Now let's go out to beyond the, the 20 frame where it should be totally invisible and we'll render there. And you can see that in fact the object is uh, following the um, rendering keys that I have put in for visibility. Let's go halfway between the visible and invisible rendering, let's say at frame 16. It should be uh, somewhat transparent at this case, which is what we see. So let's see, can I actually see that happening in move? One of the things is the interactive display of this does not change if the object itself doesn't move. So what I'm going to do is go back to frame 0, put on my auto key, and put on a keyframe for all the move, rotate, and scale factors at frame 0, and come out here to the end of the animation, and I'll put another keyframe there of, let's record that. So now you can see as I play this back, it does, although just by adding those keys to do a move and rotate, although none is taking place, I can now dynamically see the result of it fading away. So let's go back and now have it fade back into view. Let's say at frame uh, 30, we'll have it come back. So let's go to the dope sheet for the teapot. And we can go and add another key here at frame 30. And uh, we'll go to another frame 40. So let's say between frame 20, we're keeping it at value at, at 0. And we can go out to linearly to the next frame 30. We're going to keep that at 0. And then the next key at frame 40, we're going to ramp up to full visibility. So now when we go and look at the final product. We can go back to our beginning frame, hit the play button, and as we um, 
Yet if it fades away, stays completely invisible, and then should fade back in. Oh, I didn't change the uh, value back to 1 on that last key. So let's go and change that back up to full visibility at that point. All right, so that should do it. Let's go back to the beginning, hit play, it times down, comes back up again, and we've now controlled object visibility uh, through the use of the dope sheet and the visibility track. Thank you.